evening, everyone, and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Lifeline series. This is an amazing hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter as we look at how to thrive and remain spiritually centered during these extraordinary times. We have an amazing guest, and we will be introducing her in a little while. But just to tell you that um, this series has been designed to be able to provide spiritual tools and strategies that will enable people to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges being faced during these times. And we also want to support you in shifting from fear-based to faith-based thinking and feeling. This evening, our conversation is going to be around relationships now and beyond. And we are going to really have a wonderful time with our special guest, Reverend Mar Marquita Pierre McAllister. And so without further ado, I'm going to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to bless us with an opening affirmative prayer. Reverend John. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. And good evening, one and all. It's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to this special, special lifeline hour. Welcome home to beautiful Jamaica, Reverend Marquita uh, Pierre McAllister. So lovely to have you with us, albeit virtually. But welcome back to our hearts mm -hmm. and to our spiritual home. Uh, Lifeline really is aptly named because the science of mind and spirit has indeed been a lifeline for countless thousands of people since Ernest Holmes gave this great gift to all humanity. So let us begin as all things do with God. Please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. Together now, we recognize the one perfect and perfecting presence and power, God, the source and substance of our very being. We are one with this all intelligent creative presence that is even now uniting everyone that is tuned into this spiritual experience we call lifeline. There are no degrees of separation. The connectivity, liberty, love and laughter of God bind us together now with cords of everlasting unity so that we are one. Our guest presenter, Reverend Marquita Pierre McAllister, our moderator, Sandra Cooper, and I, as well as everyone viewing, are all channels through which the intelligence and power of the universe find perfect expression. And this broadcast is a blessing to one and all. I release this word to the law, rejoicing that the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God are expressed in this evening's conversation on navigating relationships now and beyond. I truly give thanks that this is already so. And together we say, and so, and so it, it is. is. Thank you so much, Reverend John. And now our guest. It is such a pleasure for me to introduce this wonderful lady. She's a graduate of the Holmes Institute and is widely respected amongst her peers for her intellect, her passion and spiritual insights. She's a past co-chair of the National Conventions, Convention of Centers for Spiritual Living and a workshop presenter to local, national and international audiences. In the summer of 2012, she left Anchorage, Alaska and moved to Las Vegas Reverend Marquita is passionate about establishing the newest Center for Spiritual Living in the Las Vegas area. In fact, she's now the spiritual leader of the Centers for Spiritual Living uh, in uh, South, let me get that right, South, Southern, Southern Nevada. Nevada, SN, Southern Nevada. Got it. Thank you so much, Reverend John. She's also a motivational speaker a workshop and retreat facilitator, a spiritual practitioner, a spiritual growth consultant, and an inspirational singer. Very, very widely um, talented lady. And in her words, and I quote, it was through the many deep challenges and life experiences of my journey that I discovered my soul's longing to express what I now offer to the world, love, compassion, passion and commitment to living my life 
out loud in oh. order to remind people they too can live a life that fulfills spirit's promise of joy, peace, and unlimited good. Friends, this is a lady that lives her life out loud. Please join me with lots of love and welcome Reverend Marquita Pierre Macalessa. Mm -hmm. Reverend Marquita, mm -hmm. floor is yours. Ah, Wonderful. Thank you, Sandra. So first, I just want to say thank you to Reverend John and to Sandra for inviting me to be on your lifeline. I love this, this the idea of this whole show. It's so great. Uh, and it's good. Hello, everybody that I know there. <laughs> it's good to be back with you again. It's, it's just great. I appreciate being here. Uh, so we are on the topic of relationship, which is also Ooh. one of my passions. Lately, I've been doing a lot more relationship workshops and and uh, speaking speaking to people. So on this, this idea of relationships and where we are now currently with wearing the mask. So it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit different, right? Because now we see part of the face and not all of the face. Uh, and that's fine if you're going to the grocery store and that, but what about, what about the other mask, right? The mask that our face is here, but it's not actually who we are, the essence is who we are. What about that mask that we wear? And one of the things we want to remember is that so much of the mask that we wear, we were subconsciously even, if you will, taught to wear the mask instead of being really vulnerable and open. And part of the reason why people aren't so vulnerable and open is because we have history of being hurt someone disapproving of who we just actually naturally are, someone making judgments about it, just who we actually naturally are. So we learn, unfortunately, <laughs> we learn to hide certain pieces of ourselves and depending on what audience we're in, we'll hide a different piece of ourselves. But the real truth is as we work with our spiritual practices of prayer and meditation, we learn to fall in love with all of Mm -hmm. ourselves. Now we don't need to wear the mask. We're much more vulnerable and open because we're not worried about someone judging us. Uh, and that is a different way to go about life and to be in relationship with other people. And the other thing is, please let us understand when it comes to relationships, every single one, be it your family of origin, be it um, a lover, be it friends, be it the co-worker and the boss, every person that we come in contact with our job as spiritual beings is to really see and know that what we're, we're, what we're connecting with is the essence of the person. And what happens is they connect with us, right? And they're actually showing us. When you can see beauty in another person, they're showing you you. Ah, I'm the same token. <laughs> when you can see ugliness in another person, mm, <laughs> they might be showing you you. <laughs> Right? So every relationship is here for us to see ourselves and to learn about ourselves. But we've been taught that our relationships are about something else. It's always about spirit. It's always about love. It's always about beauty, peace, harmony, and all the attributes that we say are to the divine. And it's about us. Can we see the so-called yucky part of someone and realize possibly they've simply been taught that that's not their true nature? and still communicate in a way that's their true nature. And the other piece I'd like for us to remember is we have learned how to communicate in relationships from usually a family of origin, from past relationships, and the things that didn't go right, so we hide a little piece of ourselves, all of that. We have um, cultural patterns of how we communicate, mm -hmm. and then we have experience patterns of how we communicate. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the idea of doing the spiritual practices so, so that we can observe and see how we are in relationship with other people. So we can choose, we have the divine right to choose mm -hmm. how we will be in relationship, how we show up in relationship and to do it in such a high vibrational way that what the universe hears is we are love and the universe of course then mirrors that back to us. Mm -hmm. That takes some doing. We have not been taught how to have really healthy relationships. And mm -hmm. here we are now, a lot of us sequestered very close to people in our, in our household and we're finding more friction, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a super opportunity to actually find the opposite. Ah, that takes some work. <laughs> takes some work and to be very, very focused on 
the opposite is actually there. Can you see the Christ presence? Are you there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's just a tiny piece. Oh. <laughs> Wow, that's that is that. You said you've said so much in in, in these past few minutes, and I, I want to I want to come back to the mass in a, in a little while. But you know, I've heard so many stories of of couples and and people because of the sequestering mm -hmm. and um, during this lockdown period, um, people are spending more time together than ever before, and of course we don't we're not distracted by the doing of going to work coming back, doing dinner, and then and then we are so tired we fall into bed and go to sleep. So now persons are forced to be together and, and it's created a whole different dynamic of, of relationship um, engagement. And some persons are not very happy with it at all and some persons are not coping with it at all. How, how can we recognize that this is a new path, a new way of being? Um, I didn't learn how to communicate when I was growing up. So um, this, is an, this is now an opportunity for me to do that. What are some specific things that we can do that, say for example, I could do that would enable me to be a better communicator with my son, with my spouse, with my sister and other members of my family? What can I do? Okay, the first thing, if you can just simply, since you're all in the same house, just everybody pick one time, one time for one time, mm -hmm. to sit down together. Mm. And the very first thing that we get to establish is that we love each other. No matter what else is going on, at the end of the day, if something was to happen to any one of those family members, we'd be right there for them, right? So the real truth is we love each other, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Can we get on the same page about that? The second piece is, so for people to understand you've got, we have patterns of communication that are unhealthy when we're communicating with each other, okay? And so, so no matter what is gonna happen, we have to decide that love is gonna be our primary factor and that I'm going to overlook, I'm gonna work at, this is our super opportunity to work at loving each other through the way that I communicate. I have specific pieces on that. And mm -hmm. so I'd love to give uh, whoever wants to take up this challenge. I call it a 30 day challenge that you're going to be with your loved ones. This is an amazing, amazing opportunity for us to learn how to communicate in love. Number one, any sentence that starts off with the, the word you stop, <laughs> because as soon as you say you of anything that has anything to do with um, a disapproval, a dissent, I don't like this. And you say, well, when you did this, and if you would just, it immediately brings up defenses and you've lost communication immediately. Boom, it's done, it's over. Mm -hmm. Especially when we're in such uh, tight quarters with each other. Mm -hmm. So instead we do come with the I statements, which is I observed, or I, I noticed this, would you help me understand? See, I still haven't said you yet. <laughs> Sooner or later I'll have to get to the you, but, but because I'm asking for an understanding, I'm not understanding why this happened. I, I don't quite get, See, and I'm putting it on myself mm -hmm. and I want information from you mm -hmm. because I'm not understanding where you were coming from when you did X, X, Y, Z, whatever that is that ir mm -hmm. it's irritating me. Okay. <laughs> so this, this idea of how to communicate with, and it doesn't matter who it is, your family member or coworker, it doesn't matter. When we communicate with, help me understand. And in my workshops, I give stem sentences. So it's easier for people, right? I could use your help. Okay, something happened today and I'm, 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 I'm uneasy. Would you please help me understand X, Y, Z, whatever it is. So my 30 day challenge to you is, unless you're putting you at the end of a sentence, don't use it when you're trying to <laughs> communicate with someone about something you disapprove of or don't like. Mm -hmm. okay. That's wonderful. Can I just say something, Sandy, as well, um, as you were speaking, Reverend Marquita, I yes. was thinking that when you say, help me to understand, you have asked to that question, it's very important to practice listening with the heart because mm -hmm. so often we listen just with the mind and we're thinking about the next clever thing we can say or we are tempted to defend our position or, 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 or our act. But when you listen from the heart, you listen with the intent to not only understand but to enter the other person's world. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. that. True. So let's put that challenge out there too. See if we can listen without having a conversation going on in the back of my head of exactly, interrupting exactly. the person because you're really not there if you've got something else going in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. right? 
So that, that active listening. being Absolutely. Being the Bhagavad Gita says that when a person responds to the joys and sorrows of others as, they, as though they were his own, he or she has attained the highest spiritual union, which is communion. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, you know, in, in just those two practices alone, um, I think one would be surprised how wide the door of one's heart would become. The, 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 to begin to own whatever it is that's coming from my lips. To be able mm. to say, this is how I feel, this is how I think. Or I was wondering, if, and then also to ask if, would you help me understand? That is really making a, a, a very deep request and it would take someone who perhaps is well to my okay to my mind most persons would respond would respond positively to a request of that nature mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of um, questions coming in on the chat let me just come bring this up a little bit um, Carol uh, Charlton says every relationship is to see ourselves mm. yes. And yes. Reverend Anne, Reverend Anne says, when you find yourself judging another from the past hurts, how can I navigate with honesty through the mess of distrust? Um, yeah, um, how do we, uh, you know, communicate clearly, easily, openly, and purely when there's so much stuff going on from what he did, she did, what happened or what didn't happen? What do we do? How do we deal with that? So I have a, a technique when I'm communicating some hard stuff, hard, tough mm -hmm. conversations. And, and many of you have heard it in maybe some different uh, language, but I use what I call the sandwich effect, right? The real truth is I know that I love this, but there's something good. I see the essence. And so I start my conversation with that. I really appreciate it when this, I love you because whatever it starts. Mm -hmm. And then the middle part, the toughest part is again, can you, I'm, I'm, I noticed this, or I heard you say this and it hurt me and I'm, that's probably not your intention. Can you help me out with that? Can you explain this to me? Or I know, you know, someone's been doing this thing. They, they keep snipping at you, whatever they're doing, right? And go, I noticed, I feel mm -hmm. this. Am I seeing that correctly? Was that your intention? Because usually it's not their intention. They're just communicating from their own pattern of pain right mm -hmm. we are still here for love if we can just keep that in the forefront when we're communicating mm -hmm. our communication will change when you communicate from the heart speaking from the eye speaking from love the other person usually softens mm -hmm. and if they don't soften please understand they're simply speaking from some pain mm -hmm. it's not really necessarily you it's a history of whatever they've been through. You just happen to be the person in front of them in the moment. Mm -hmm. So this is our opportunity to open up and be patient and be loved and communicate in a way that someone else can understand what we're really mm -hmm. trying to express. Which is what, what happens when one doesn't have that opportunity anymore to speak to that person, when it's perhaps a family member, a parent who, um, there, there are some old hurts of perhaps abuse or uh, an ex-spouse and that so ex saying the person's no longer in their life or that they've passed on is that they're either they're either no longer in, in in one's life the person has gone off either the person might have passed or the person is not available for that conversation mm -hmm. what do you do there's a couple of tools actually we can do. Number one, the ones that we spoke about, you're still gonna come from that framework, right? Mm -hmm. You can do uh, the journaling, the writing the letter to them, even though it'll never get to them, it doesn't really matter, right? The inner, remember, everything is energy. So it's to the energy and your intention of love and wanting to heal the relationship. This is really important when uh, family of origin members have passed on and we never cleared it up, never cleaned it up, right? That we still do the cleanup work Mm -hmm. Okay, and still recognize and connect on the what I call the energetic level. That's because who that's who we are. So you can write the letter, you can do forgiveness work. That's a whole another topic, mm -hmm. right? And please, please let's uh, still keep in mind whatever the hurt is, whatever the pain is, um, we can still connect from our essence to theirs. Doesn't matter if they're in this realm or the other, and that's really really important. And I'll tell you a short story on that. 
I had something, I had a, an interesting relationship with my mother back in the day. It was hellacious <laughs> back in the day. And she hadn't passed on yet, but something came forward from my subconscious realizing I had not forgiven her for something. It is amazing when you clean up the energy. I never told her, didn't need to, but I absolutely did the, what we call ritual. I absolutely did the forgiveness and I, you know, did some love and all of that. It was amazing when I went to talk to her the next time what happened. Spirit, remember, spirit knows no space or time. Mm -hmm. You're cleaning up your own energy. You're cleaning up your own heart. Does something mystically and magically through the ethers to the other person. And if it never does, your job is always to clean up your own self, your own Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Always. This is where the work is. The work is always within us to be clean, clear, and always be from the love level. And the spirit takes care of the rest. I've had people who come up who did their forgiveness work and came back to me and said, you won't believe who called me. Who called you? So-and-so who I haven't talked to in five years. And it was bizarre. Because, and I said, no, you cleaned up your work. Mm -hmm. Now it allowed them. Now that, that icky tie is gone. And mm -hmm. now they can come forward. You can have a new relationship now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That works. Awesome, awesome. Um, there's another comment from Shesi Boo online she says and this is this this is about the mask and she says what if i've decided to take off my mask and others in the relationship don't seem to understand the unmasked me the new ah. mm -hmm. yes that's what it's so if the unmasked you is really taking off the mask and make sure you're being secure within yourself that you are loved you are the christ presence right Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they don't understand. And let me say this. They may not understand in the beginning. Why? Because they see <clears> you <throat> as the old person. That's what people do. And it can take some time. And maybe it'll never get there. It doesn't matter. Are you being authentic with you? And being Actually, that in, the, in, the, in, the, in Ernest Holmes says in this thing called you, um, that the divine pattern I'm quoting would be imperfect without you. Dare to be yourself. Stand in wonder before the majesty and might, the beauty and power of that divine presence, which seeks expression through your individual life. Mm -hmm. So that's your responsibility to be. It you. is. And watch the uh, mystical happen when you do that. It's all right. Watch it happen. See, mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge <clears throat> is to show up authentically. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps what might happen is that we might shed relationships that were connected with the that false self that way of being that wasn't authentic and it could be a spouse mm -hmm. it could be someone um, that we are in, were in love with but then you know if, if the relationship starts to crack when I begin to show up as authentic then it, it perhaps wasn't for me in the first place not only that but spirit's got something better for you waiting yeah. so just yeah. yes being so, because remember, when we are not being authentic, that is a lot of energy and a lot of work. <laughs> it yes. really is. Yes. And so, yes. when you decide to be authentic, you're freeing up a whole lot of energy. And now, people who have never been in your sphere come into your sphere. And it's a much freeing way of being in life itself when you are 100% congruent with who you really, really are. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I really think wonderful, that's wonderful. fantastic. Um, you know, um, the 30-day the challenge that you're talking about, you, you spoke to, um, you know, changing our sentences from, from, you know what you did or you haven't done, and you, you know, to I feel, I think, and so on. And you also spoke about being able to listen, listen from the heart. Um, listening is, again, something that, that we never learned how to do. I just wait till you stop talking for me to say what I need to say. Mm -hmm. So we end up, I call it communication table tennis. You talk, I talk, you talk, I talk. And, and no, none, of, none of us is really hearing what the other is saying. So how does one, um, as we say, put a, put a break on? I, I need to say this. You don't understand what I feel, what I think. It then doesn't that then mean that we have to be really what is called other oriented? Yes. So so here's so here I have a, a short story. This is how I learned in one of my long term relationships. The person would would I'm trying to express something. I'm trying to get out of frustration, and they would interrupt because they're not listening. 
And I got frustrated with it. And I finally, I'm like, how do I ever get to communicate what I'm really trying to get out without us arguing? And it, it's escalating into an argument. I finally figured something out. You be the one to do the listening. So if a person interrupts, just stop talking, stop. Let them interrupt, let them get completely all the way because people cannot hear you until they have been heard, right? So if they interrupt, you're trying, you know, you start the conversation, you're trying to do something and they interrupt because whatever they say, just stop talking. I when they, that. yes, when they're complete. Take a deep breath. Take a deep, right. And when they're complete, then your job is to say, so here's what I heard you say. And you finish whatever, you compare back to them what they said. Now, remember, you're the initiator. You wanted the conversation, right? So, but once they say, yes, yeah, it's okay. So can you tell me, and I know this is a little interesting. Then you say, can you tell me, I, I didn't quite get my point out. Can you tell me what my point was? Because it gets them to reflect that they didn't hear you. They interrupted you, right? And then if they can't say, no problem, and then start again. But now you've taught them, and if they interrupt again, and some people are real interesting, they will interrupt again, stop talking. <laughs> they need to talk. You're not going to get anything over to them until they're done. So allow them, be the one that you're patient, you're waiting, and when they're done, you reflect back to them what they said, if you've got that, good, because that's teaching you. Are you really actively listening to them? This is a learn, learn all over the place. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, one of two things happens. You either actually get to have your communication or you'll simply say, and I've had to do this, this doesn't seem like a good time for us to, maybe for me to really get out what I need to say. So can we schedule a different time? Mm. Stop trying to go against things. Don't go against. Recognize what's unfolding in front of you. And then just schedule another time when maybe they, they might be in a better mood to listen to you. Mm. Right? We keep trying to push conversation. Not necessary. Mm -hmm. Not necessary. Oh, this, this is absolutely amazing. Because what I'm hearing in all of that is that I must be responsible for the communication, for what happens. It, it doesn't matter what you do, what you say. I am responsible for the communication and the quality of that communication. Yes. Awesome. Totally get that. Oh, I, 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 I quite like this, this strategy and I'm going to use it. When, if people would understand the truth is we come into um, arguments and the screen, all that kind of weird stuff is 100%, okay, 99%? unnecessary. If you will take responsibility for how the communication is going and stop talking <laughs> when it's not, just stop. How does it ever get into an argument? How does it ever do that, right? So when you take the 100% responsibility of having um, effective communication, loving communication, it won't go any further until that's lovely. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, we have a a question from Reverend Michael Record. He asks, please explain the poetic expression, um, quote, communicate from the heart, unquote. Concretely, what does that look like? Concretely, what, okay. I, I love the word concretely, that's very interesting. So uh, when we speak, talk about speaking from the heart, one, we also speak of speaking your truth, not from your head, but this is about what you're feeling which is one of the reasons we use I statements, right? So you're talking about how something has happened and you're talking about how it has hit you, how it doesn't work for you or how it does work for you. I am feeling this. So speaking from the heart is a little bit more than the intellect. It doesn't say you don't have intellectual conversations. It says you're speaking your truth of your whole being, being incongruent with what you're about to say, being authentic, right? So it's not just head knowledge. Your whole, your whole self believes that this is a loving relationship. Your whole self believes we can do better than what we're doing. Your whole self believes I want to be 100% authentic in our relationship. The only way I know to do that is can we please talk about how I'm feeling, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Heart, how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Interesting. No, um, I'm glad that you said that because I am by nature a feeler, and there and, and this is, you know, personality assessment. And Myers Briggs tells me I'm a feeler, and I respond very strongly 
um, my tears flow and I see a pretty flower, a butterfly flies into my bedroom and I go, oh! <laughs> um, so it's easy for me to feel, I connect well with my heart. But there are others that I know who are very strongly intellectual and they reason out things. And you say, so um, how do you feel? Oh, well, um, what I'm feeling is that we have to consider the ramifications of it. And they go off into a, a, a thing about, about thinking. Okay. Uh, what of persons who are, who are naturally not feelers? Um, how do, how we, how do we um, communicate the idea that feeling, um, feeling from the heart, communicating from the heart, is the way to go, the way to, to, to improve on relationships? So first, I, I love the question because many times, uh, uh, I'll call it a person who's a feeler and an intellectual person will come together. And automatically, right off the bat, they've got some communication issues oh, yes. <laughs> going on. So what I have learned, because I'm more like you, my husband is more of the intellectual, right? And so one of the things I realized is as a feeler and as a, a, a fast communicator, I had to slow all the way down mm -hmm. so that, because he would give me an intellectual answer and I'd go, okay, so here's what I'm hearing you say. And I repeat that. So can you tell me that's, I heard what you think, help me out, help me out. Does that, does that feel good to you? Does it feel mm -hmm. good to you? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, how do you feel? Does this, does this really work for you? So sometimes we have to change the wording. If you will listen to the other person, listen carefully the words that they're using and see if you can use the same words to connect though in a feeling way. To how use their modality. Their modality, correct. And here's the so thing. You would, you would, so you, you would say to your husband, honey, what do you think about so-and-so? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll tell because you. Because that's, that's his modality. Mm -hmm. And he might even tell you what he feels when you've asked him what, what he thinks. Because Correct. people think a feel or feel a think. <laughs> and then if you're talking to Sandy, you'll say, Sandy, how do you feel about this, this proposition? Mm -hmm. So if we can use the other person's modality, it's, it's very helpful in the communication process. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, in my um, view. Awesome, Reverend John. You know, practitioner Carol Campbell has sort of been, um, she's resonated with something that I was thinking and she said it beautifully. She says, um, it would appear that what's important is to let the ego go in order to allow active listening. Because mm -hmm. if I'm sitting here, oh, oh God, she's not listening, she's not listening. I need to be heard, I need to be heard. But so we need to let the, the ego go and just let the conversation and the communication flow. Yeah, Reverend John said something. He said, breathe. And we, we call that pause power uh, in my center. We call it pause power. Mm -hmm. Blow it down. <laughs> and like Reverend John said, listen carefully to how they're communicating and use that when you're communicating back to them. People mm -hmm. can hear you so much better. Breathe. Beautiful. But there's beautiful. so much life in the breath. Mm -hmm. So much life. Um, Reverend, Reverend Anne is asking you to repeat the 30 day challenge um, concerning the new conversation that must start in a relationship where we are having difficulty with loving communication between family in pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Between family what? Family in, in pain. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's, and a family of origin is our best uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to learn how to love and to learn how to communicate and to learn to let the ego go. They really are just, they're just the best teachers, right? Because they have all this history and they see you in a particular way that maybe you're not anymore, <laughs> right? But they will come from that. So when it comes to your family of origin, your best, the best piece is to please, please remember they probably are in pain. You're listening is your best communication tool. Absolutely. Because again, when they feel heard, then and only then can they hear you. Indeed. Listening from the heart actually brings the grace of God to the encounter. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. And slow the communication down. 
and you know, repeat back to make sure they know that you, they were heard by repeating or paraphrasing what they said before you start talking. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. then they know they've been heard and you'll watch, if you watch them physically, the body shifts, relax a little bit and then they're ready to hear you. When it comes to family origin, we've got a lot of stuff. And sometimes um, when people are communicating, um, a lot of stuff comes out all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's more important to hear them and see if you can repeat back the most important pieces to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes that's all that you can do and you have to go away and pray. <laughs> you have to go away and pray because their view of something is totally off compared to your view. Mm -hmm. And if you're triggered, when, please, please hear, when you're triggered, you feel like, oh, that, that uh, starts to come up because they're not telling the truth in your view, <laughs> based on their view. That is not the time for you to communicate. Take mm -hmm. a breath and, and feel this and just go, can we schedule another time? But make sure you've paired it back or paraphrased back to them what you heard. Because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, they're still not going to receive anything you have to say. Mm -hmm. Reverend Marquita, it, it is seeming to me that there's going to have to, that one is going to have to come empty. <laughs> what, what I mean by that is, if I come full with what went before, if I come full with last week, last month, last year, when we were five years old, when, when you had an affair, when this happened, so if, if that is there, you know, as in, we say in Jamaica, in, it is in Macra, it is stuck here. And um, it then becomes, how, how does one come to the conversation empty? And how does one put that clean the space to be able to have that conversation, to listen, to be, be able to ask the kinds of questions which, which will then have that authentic exchange? How do we empty? So here's what's really, really important. I get we all have the history, but as I started in the very beginning, remember, we're about, we want to actually have loving mm -hmm. relationships. Absolutely. So yes, you have to empty. But the real question is, you can rehash all that history if you want to, but the real question is, what kind of relationship do you want in the future? Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. History has happened, right? It has happened. You can't change that. Are you mm -hmm. really going to spend all your energy on rehashing what happened, what they did, and they had an affair, and they cursed you out, and whatever they did? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to go, you know, let's work on, I'm going to work on forgiving myself, and you don't even have to say this to them, but I would say it to yourself. I'm going to work on forgiving myself or whatever, however I participated in the past. And I'm going to work on forgiving them because it's in the past. And I'm going to focus my heart attention on what I want to create. Mm -hmm. We are co-creators with spirit. We get to create something new. Mm -hmm. And if you will let the person know I love you more than you curse them, that is, you know, because we have a tendency, we've been raised and we complain more than we praise. Ooh, backwards, right? If you mm -hmm. want a healthy relationship, you got to praise a whole lot more than you ever <laughs> complain. Mm -hmm. So we, we come empty when we've decided that I am love and I'm going to forgive myself for whatever happened in the past that I allowed to go on or I didn't know how to fix it. And I'm also going to forgive them because they were coming from whatever they came from and that's why they did whatever they did. But I'm not going to spend so much attention on rehashing it because, gosh, where does that really get us like, other than more hurt feelings, right? Ugh. But I'm going to decide mm -hmm. what kind of relationship I want to have with this person. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to put color all over it. I'm going to put all my energy and love in it. And then I'm going to come to the conversation. Yes, awesome. Awesome. It, 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 is, it is really, really powerful. It is saying to me also, I have to choose what I want going forward. Absolutely. I have to decide. And if I want this relationship, I'm going to have to make the choice. The past is the past. It's done. It's finished. It has nothing to do with now. What do I want going forward? Um, and to come back to the, the question about the 30-day challenge, can you just, um, you, you, you shared a couple of points. Can you just go over them again for... I will, stand, but I have, I realize I'm incomplete with the last thing. The other piece is when you're looking at the past, there's a lot of gifts there. You learned a whole lot mm -hmm. from whatever happened in those other relationships. 
you really have, please write down your gifts. What did you get from each relationship? There's so much good that happened there. Maybe you didn't see it. That whole divorce and thing, but you had a whole list. There's so much you learned. Keep the gifts from the past. Those are the things you write down and you keep. The rest of it, you just need to let go, <laughs> right? So on our 30-day challenge, this is about recognizing um, becoming more observant of your own communication patterns and to see when you're using you <laughs> way too much. You know, you start the sentence with you did this or you didn't do that or why didn't you take out the trash or whatever it is. And to recognize that that communication pattern in and of itself puts up a block. So we want to change that into mm -hmm. I would really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Would you, would you, look, not, not would you mind, but you know what, what would really help me if, help me understand, you know, I realized that I don't, I'm not clear about something. I thought there was, we had an agreement about whatever you thought you had an agreement on. And did I miss something? Mm -hmm. See how the you is not there, so you're not putting it off on them. Did I misunderstand something? I thought we agreed, did I mess? And so, the, you know, and they'll get it, but now you haven't, you haven't pinpointed you, you, you. That's not the way. So your 30 day challenge is to either not use the word you at all or put it at the very end of the sentence because you're wanting to start with, I notice, I thought, did I miss something? Help me understand, yeah? Mm -hmm. And see how, how far, you'll be surprised that it's a little, a little challenging if you're not used to doing that, but it's so worth mm -hmm. the work. And There's a like wonderful a, advertisement in, in here in Jamaica with a, a boy and a, a man and a woman having an argument and she says your fault and he says your fault and she says your fault and he says your fault and then it dawns on him that it probably he has some responsibility and he says my fault and she says what your fault <laughs> and he said yes I was wrong it's my fault. <laughs> Oh, a wonderful, yeah. wonderful advertisement. Yeah. That is funny. Um, the second thing you said was to listen from the heart. So the first was to change the sentences from you to I. And the second thing, listen with the heart. And, and, and what I understood from that is to listen from a space of, of love, of joy, of beauty, of, of, of the fruits of the spirit. Um, yep. And, and what, I, what, what I, you know, if I listen from that, it's going to make a difference to the to, to what I hear. Yes. From yes. The because heart. you enter into the other person's world. Yes. 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 In a very real way. And they, they can feel that energy. Yes. And, and if you paraphrase back to them, they'll mm -hmm. know that you, they were yep. really heard. Okay. I particularly like the, the exercise that you did when, so I've shared my heart and you have interrupted me. And, um, but you can't say you've interrupted me. You can't say that. Exactly. Or I feel interrupted. And so I stopped talking. And then I paraphrase you. And then I share that I, I didn't, I, I need to, to, to complete what I was saying. And if it happens again, I can say that perhaps, um, you know, when would be another time that would, um, you know, suit our conversation or where we can finish or so. So let me Just say one the small person. point. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Robert Mackey. I was going to say one small point. When you stop talking and take a deep centering breath, don't roll your eyes because then that's, <laughs> oh, oh God. Okay, I'll stop. I'll shut up. All right, continue. You know, it's not that kind of stuff. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yes. No. Don't saying. stop. Don't stop talking and bat your eyelashes. You know you'll blow my <laughs> wig off. You know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I will. I was going to say. So yes. when you first start to do this, it could be a little irritating to the other person because they're used to combating with you, right? Mm -hmm. They want to have the energy necessarily to to do this argument thing. That's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Do the conversation for another time. Sooner, if you will be consistent with taking charge of the communication in love, they will either come around to doing your style of communication or they're going to disappear from your life. Okay. Not I'm not, I must say this. Mm -hmm. I, I really must say this. I think that when you're going to have the conversation again or, or try to have it again, you need to approach it with the, with the mental set of this is God going to have a conversation with God, God. Yes. in God's relationship. 
So okay. that's it. It's not, oh, here we go again. Oh, right. Yeah. Good point. Really do come from the energy of I am the Christ meeting Christ. I'm going to have that type of Absolutely. Comfort. Absolutely. So it's a holy communion. It's a okay. union. Yes, I like that. Yes. Um, Denise Webb English says, this is very interesting. Um, I heard what you think, but they, they feel a think and still not feel. What do you do with that answer? Mm -hmm. So let me just say that again, I need to understand. I heard what you think, but they feel a think and still not feel. What do you do with that? So what I'm hearing is there's a feeling, it sounds like, so help me out if I'm correct. It sounds like the feeling person is talking to, it feels like a, a thinking person. A thinking person. The thinking person responds, but the feeling person doesn't feel that they're really feeling what came from their head, right? That's so here's the thing. We get to, it's, it's, I hear it and it's still, it's a, a, a little judgment because a thinking person, that is how they communicate, right? But so if you'll just breathe, take a breath, breath and simply, and I learned this from being a chaplain, I'm now a hospice chaplain, that your job again is to talk to the essence of the person and to listen with your own heart and not to push, not to push them to say your language, you know, while I feel this and you're like, no, oh, that's still coming from your head. No judge, just let that, just let that be. And you keep connecting from your centered place to their centered place. And just allow breath, allow, allow spirit to do its work. Don't push and don't rush the conversation. Oh, love that, it's love time. that. This doesn't happen overnight, people, okay? Awesome. Well, there, there is one last comment from Theo. He says, wow, when they feel heard, then and only then will they really feel heard. Absolutely. I, he says, I needed this reminder. Uh, and then, um, so Carol uh, um, says, Oftentimes the pause can be very frustrating for the one needing to be heard as it can feel like the other isn't interested in hearing. How to hold that space open so it doesn't feel like a closed door. So let me say this again, we're taking charge of our communication, right? Mm -hmm. So when we enter into what we call crucial conversations, please go with a servant's heart. Mm -hmm. Right? We get that you need to be heard, of course, because you initiate the conversation, you want this to happen so you can be heard. But again, if you go with the servant's heart to actually serve, which means you're hearing them first, you're being the servant to hear them first. If you really will do this consistently, oh, trust me, you will be heard. Be, but now you'll actually <laughs> be heard instead of just having, you're just spouting off and getting stuff off your chest. You don't want that. Actually, you want to really have a true connection in your conversations but you have to go to be a servant of communication first. Oh, well, you know, um, Reverend Marquita, our time is almost up and the questions are just starting to flow. <laughs> we have a couple more minutes and um, I want to take just absolutely one, 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 one more. How do you deal with relationships that seem to be going nowhere? Mm -hmm. When it's often said there is a lesson to be learned, do you end the relationship or stay and learn the lesson? Oh, Ooh. well, that's a great question. Ooh, I love it. I love it. So I love it because what I'm hearing from the, the person who's asking the question is we already know that our relationships are there for us to learn, right? Mm -hmm. So, so your number one, doing your spiritual practices keeps you in touch with your intuitive self, your centered self. So yes, you're going to learn all you can learn. And we also learn to remain safe. So if the relationship is not only not fulfilling, but you are not safe, meaning you keep getting hurt by the person, again, this is our opportunity to learn what are they mirroring to me that I need to learn, that I need to see. When your time is up, this is why we do the spiritual practices, you simply ask spirit, is my time up? Learn to listen to God more than you're listening to anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And because I certainly had this and when the relationship was up, it's amazing what will come forth and you will know, you will know it is time to go and you will do it not in anger or hate. You'll just, you'll know it'll be very peaceful and you will move. The other thing is when you learn to communicate in this way 
and, and in doing this, one of two things really does happen. You are, are opening yourself up to love, to be even more love because you're choosing to be love instead of trying to get love, right? You're choosing to be love. You will start to shift. The relationship will start to shift. You may not have to do anything and the person walks away, right? Mm -hmm. Or you'll be so clear to you and you'll walk away. Or they become more love because you've become love and the relationship starts to heal and mend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, take charge of your love center as far as learning how to be in relationship with yourself first, with God, right? Then the other person and everything starts to fall in place. Again, this is not mm -hmm. overnight. But if you will be consistent, watch it transform your all of your relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh gosh! This oh, I love that. So I powerful. Love that. It's a so blessed powerful. journey when two or more are gathered in the name of love. Really. Yes. Oh, oh it's just oh. stand by saying, just get the family together and say, look here. The, the given is we love one another. We mm -hmm. do. You've got to start there and keep that when you're in a relationship with whoever, brother, sister, lover. Keep that in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Keep it there. Remember, that's why you're there. You're not there for anything else. This is about growing, learning, and loving together. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Oh, I love much. that. And and um, the, the challenge of moving from from you statements to I statements, um, listening with the heart. You know, stop talking. Coming from that space of 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 God, of making the choice to of what we want with the relationship in the future and just take charge of our love center. There's just so, so much. Go with being a serf, servant of the heart. You know, learn to listen to God more than you listen to anybody else. That one stood out for me. Wow, this is extraordinary. We could go on for a whole, another hour. <laughs> Relationships is a big topic. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. But at least we, we know that what we, what we do now uh, will certainly create the type of relationship we're going to see in the future. And it doesn't matter who that relationship is with, Correct. family member, spouse, child, whoever, it doesn't yes. matter. Wow, how awesome. Um, a, a little bit of, I mean, guys, certainly those of you who are listening, we are here to serve you. And so please feel free to call, call us at our, um, make an appointment to meet with a, a, a practitioner. We can offer the kind of help and support to enable you to live from the inside out, to live from that heart center, to be able to connect with your loved ones um, from spirit to spirit, from that God center that you are, from that beautiful space that you are. And um, those of you who have been joined, who have joined us and who are listening this evening, if you if you'd love to um, to connect with us, to support us and our own work at the Temple of Light Center for Spir Spiritual Living. Uh, there is a, you can feel free to contribute to our bank account at the Bank of Nova Scotia number, account number 20941. And there's also a link in the chat to contribute through our donate mm -hmm. button on PayPal. Okay, so it's now my pleasure to ask you, Reverend Marquita, to do our closing affirmative prayer. Uh, I'd love to. Mm. So let us just take that collective breath together. Feeling and sensing and knowing that spirit is everywhere across the seas, Jamaica, here in Las Vegas, everywhere is from this space that we connect with each other in the oneness from the heart, knowing that we are the children of the most high of the divine expressing itself uniquely as each and every one of us. And so we are already in relationship with each other. So I'm just knowing that since we've had such a wonderful time giving thanks for knowing that we've had some aha moments, some remembrances. So knowing that as we leave each other in this space, we are always still connected in the divine. Knowing that that heals us, continues to make us grow. We are one. Blessing the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. I am so grateful and thankful that we could all be of service to each other. All praises be unto the divine. As we release this to that divine law, we simply allow it to be. All mm -hmm. praises be unto God. And so it And is. so it beautifully so is. It Thank is. you so much, Reverend. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good to see you all. Yes. Thank you for having and, me. 
And I also just like to thank our, our, our support, Theo, who helped to, to ensure that we connect on Facebook, Steve and Vance, who supported us. Steve, with that wonderful music at the be beginning of our session. And Vance, uh, both provide so much amazing support to us. And to all of you who have been listening all this evening for this past hour, uh, we're going to be recorded and placed on Facebook so you can go back and, and have a listen. And um, perhaps one of the things that we will do is to really get the details from Reverend Marquita of the of the 30 day challenge so we can post it on Facebook and share it with you. So so it's just now for me to say thank you from my heart. Thank you, Reverend Marquita. It was such a joy meeting you. My You're pleasure. an awesome uh, kindred spirit. And I look forward to seeing you and your husband in Jamaica again soon. Yes. Love you, bless you, Love and you. have a yeah. wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.